The Switch was constructed with local multiplayer in mind. In today's day and age, where every game is played over the internet, having this functionality is a huge deal. The online capabilities of the Switch are... eh. So let's take a look at some of the best games that take advantage of this. The best games that you could play with a friend on your one system or on multiple systems. I think the all-around best game for anyone to just pick up and play is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's easy for anybody to understand, and it's fun for people who might not even play games too much. It's one of those Nintendo games that kind of rewards you for being terrible. It's also really easy to set up a multiplayer game. You can use any type of controller you might have, including the single Joy-Cons. Meaning, if you have your Switch, you're always ready for a multiplayer match. You could also have two players on one Switch play locally online against other players. I love it when multiplayer games do this. It was great in Call of Duty. It was great in Smash Brothers. It's great in this. The game also supports up to eight switches to be connected wirelessly or 12 switches docked connected via a LAN cable. That will probably never happen, but I could see maybe a handful of people with switches playing together wirelessly. It's currently $60 and that price probably isn't going anywhere and has a Metacritic score of 92. Rocket League is an amazing online game on any console. It's soccer, but with cars. It's ridiculous. It's a recipe for a lot of yelling. No. Oh, man. No. Yeah, no. QB. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yes, you did, we did. Actually. Okay. So yeah, you're baby. Hey, Bob. No. Unstoppable. <laughs> This game also has my favorite feature of playing split screen online. Right now, it requires both users to have a Nintendo account, but that's something Psyonix is actively looking to fix. It's also cross-platform, so you can play with people who have this on Steam or on Xbox One. That's a big deal. This game doesn't allow split screen in tabletop mode, presumably because of the controller configurations, but it does allow four players split screen in docked mode, up to eight players locally, and up to eight players via online play. Rocket League is probably the most bang for your buck at $20. You will probably get the most longevity out of this title. And it has a Metacritic score of 86. I would love to recommend ARMS, but I can't in good conscience do that. I don't think it's that great. It's been out for a while and no one really talks about it anymore. Plus who wants to flail their arms around? And don't forget, it's $60, that's a lot. Instead, if you want a fighting game and you're playing with people who play video games often, I would recommend Pokémon Tournament. It's a popular Nintendo IP, but this time framed as a traditional side-scrolling fighting game. Think Tekken or Virtua Fighter, but with Pokémon. There's supers and combos and all of that stuff, but it's pretty easy to get into. I'm not a fighting game guy and I had fun. The game allows two players with one Joy-Con each or linked play or up to three versus three online battles. It currently has a 79 on Metacritic, which is better than its original form on Wii U. And it's $60. Don't laugh at me, but Super Bomberman R is an amazing multiplayer game. And that's about all it's good for. Its co-op mode is reminiscent of old 16-bit games where you have to plow through the main campaign while sharing lives. So you trade off having help for less lives to spare. Story mode co-op is two players. You can do two players on your console versus randos online or battle mode up to eight players online. You can even do eight players locally on one console and each player only requires a single Joy-Con each. The controls are super simple. This game got a bad rap and I understand why. It used to be expensive and outside of the fun multiplayer doesn't really have much to offer. Luckily, now it's only $45, which still isn't that great and has a super sad Metacritic score of 62. Previously, I was really rooting for Bomberman, but it came out and it kind of flopped. But I promise you that the multiplayer is fun. $45, eh. The only other game on this list with online functionality is Splatoon 2. In fact, it's only online, unless you count LAN play. Basically, you can only have one player per console, which is sad. But if you're fortunate enough to be around a couple of Switch users who also have this game, you could have a lot of fun. Now, I have a few problems with this game's online functionality. For instance, you have to make it to ranked play before you can even make a squad to play against randos. I see that as a major flaw. 
But hey, the game's revered among Switch fans. It's a very good game. Your friends just have to be diehards. It has a Metacritic of 83 and is currently $60. Now for the local games. First up, Snipper Clips. If you've been following the Switch at all since launch, then you've definitely heard of this game. It's a unique idea that serves as a perfect example of how the Switch can turn into a multiplayer machine at a moment's notice. It's a co-op puzzle game. It can be played up to four players with one Joy-Con each. It's currently $20 and has a Metacritic score of 80. But there's also $10 DLC that has an 85 on Metacritic. Get this if you're trying to show off your new console to people and you want some exclusives. Overcooked is also local only, which is a shame, but it's a fantastic party game. You can have up to four players playing with one Joy-Con each. The controls are very simple, so this doesn't affect the gameplay at all. Sounds stupid. You're a bunch of chefs in a kitchen performing various kitchen tasks in a timely fashion, but maybe you have to walk across a lava bridge, or maybe you have to jump between moving trucks. It ramps up and gets very frantic very quickly. And of course, we'll have you yelling at your teammates. It's co-op, so that's encouraged. It's just $20 with a Metacritic score of 77. This is another great value if you're looking for a party game. One Two Switch is basically a demo for the Switch to show off its hardware capabilities. It's like the Wii Sports of the Switch. It's filled with a couple of fun competitive mini games, all unique in their own right. But I could see how the mystique could wear off. How many times could you feel balls roll around the inside of the Joy-Con via its HD rumble and be amazed? I think the only use for this game is to show off your $300 purchase to your parents. Maybe wow their old feeble minds a little bit. But for the most part, I'd say skip it. I'd recommend snipper clips over this any day. And it has a very depressing Metacritic of 58. Again, it's a gimmick. It would be fun to bust out during Christmas dinner and get the grandparents involved, but is that worth $50 to you? You certainly won't be playing this game in any other circumstance. Finally, we have Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. This game is not new. It's been around for a while. And if you haven't played it yet, there is something seriously wrong with you. And I say that every single time I bring it up. It's a 2D side-scroller a la old NES games, but they've added local co-op. This adds some new abilities and forces you to play with all new strategies. It's the perfect game to get someone else in on. Easy to pick up, hard to master, that sort of thing. That's the key to a good multiplayer game, cause you might be a master, but your friend or boyfriend or girlfriend might not be. Anyway, it's 25 bucks and packed with way too much content and has a Metacritic of 91. The highest rating on this list besides Mario Kart 8 because nothing can ever compete with Mario. And the great thing about the Switch is because it's so small and so portable, you can bring it to your friend's house or your family's house if you're just hanging out or for the holiday season. The only problem is the dock that comes with it is kind of big. You might want to look into a third party solution for it. This S Fans adapter is a lot easier to take with you and carry and set up than the big bulky dock. Just make sure that you have an officially licensed Nintendo charger to use with it, otherwise, too bad. We have a video about all the different types of portable docks that there are for the Switch and how much of a pain in the ass it is to even make one and how pretty much they're all kind of bad in the end, but check that out. The great thing about the Nyko dock that just came out is that it retails at $50 and is currently only $45 on Amazon, making it 50% cheaper than the official Nintendo dock and it comes with its own charger, which is already better than a lot of the other portable dock options out there. Still doesn't work with my MacBook charger though. I don't know why that is considering the Switch itself works with it. I will put Amazon links to all of these things in the description below. That also helps support our channel a little bit. By the way, if you don't know who that was, then you've been sleeping on the comic book videos on this channel and the live podcasts and the backlog. You know, all those videos that premiere first on twitch.tv slash wolfden at 10 a.m. Eastern time where we hang out with each other and talk about the videos in real time. Come on, you knew that already. This week I was on MDB's channel playing Mario Party 2 and doing just an amazing job as per usual. Oh wait, Recently it's not supposed to be the ghost. Game. Oops. <laughs> what the f- Wolf Den Live episode 100 is very soon and we've got some goodies for that. 
Well, what did you guys think about all these multiplayer Switch games? What did I leave out? Do you have any stories of any of these games bringing your friends together? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, all of this other social media garbage. I also forgot to mention that you have like one day to pick up this shirt. Also, there'll be some Black Friday sales over on our Tee Public store this weekend, so check that out too. And remember, the most important things that you could do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe you want to play some multiplayer games with on the Switch, but is too lazy to pull the trigger on, let's say, Splatoon or Rocket League or any of the games we talked about here. Thank you guys very much. Have yourselves a very good week.